Welcome to the 2023 Virginia DMV Written Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your DMV instructor to walk you through the questions. You approach a four-way stop sign at the same time as another vehicle. Both vehicles arrive simultaneously and intend to proceed straight ahead. Which vehicle has the right of way? A, the vehicle on the left. B, the vehicle on the right. C, the vehicle that arrives first. D, the vehicle with the loudest horn. The correct answer is C, the vehicle that arrives first. In a situation where two vehicles arrive at a four-way stop sign simultaneously and both intend to proceed straight ahead, the vehicle that arrives first has the right of way. The general rule at a four-way stop is to yield the right of way to the vehicle that arrives first and then proceed in a counterclockwise order. Question two. What does a solid yellow line on a roadway indicate? A. Passing is allowed when safe. B. No passing allowed. C. Passing is allowed in designated areas. D. Passing is allowed during daylight hours only. The correct answer is B. No passing allowed. A solid yellow line on a roadway indicates that passing is not allowed. Drivers should not cross the solid yellow line to overtake or pass other vehicles unless there are specific circumstances such as turning left or avoiding an obstacle. Question 3. What is the proper way to respond to a flashing red traffic light? A. Proceed with caution without stopping. B. Stop and wait for the light to turn green. C. Treat it as a stop sign. D. Slow down and yield to oncoming traffic. The correct answer is C. Treat it as a stop sign. When encountering a flashing red traffic light, drivers must treat it as a stop sign. They should come to a complete stop yield the right of way to any other vehicles or pedestrians, and proceed when it is safe to do so. Question 4. Which of the following is true about a learner's permit? A. It allows the holder to drive alone without any restrictions. B. It is only issued to individuals under 18 years old. C. It must be held for a specific duration before applying for a driver's license. D. It grants full driving privileges similar to a regular driver's license. The correct answer is C. It must be held for a specific duration before applying for a driver's license. A learner's permit is a restricted license that allows individuals to learn to drive under specific conditions. It is typically issued to both teens and adults, and the holder must usually hold the permit for a specific duration, often several months, and complete a certain number of practice hours before becoming eligible to apply for a driver's license. Question 5. When approaching a school bus with its red lights flashing and stop arm extended, what should you do? A. Proceed with caution at a reduced speed. B. Stop until the lights stop flashing and the stop arm is retracted. C. Honk your horn to alert the bus driver. D. Pass the school bus at a safe distance. The correct answer is B. Stop until the lights stop flashing and the stop arm is retracted. When a school bus displays its red lights flashing and its stop arm extended, Drivers in all lanes, including those traveling in the opposite direction, are required to come to a complete stop and remain stopped until the lights stop flashing and the stop arm is retracted. This is to ensure the safety of children boarding or exiting the bus. Passing a school bus in this situation is illegal and dangerous. Question 6. What does a solid white line on a roadway indicate? A. No passing allowed. B. Passing is allowed when safe. C. Passing is allowed in designated areas. D. Passing is allowed during daylight hours only. The correct answer is A. No passing allowed. A solid white line on a roadway indicates that passing is not allowed. Drivers should not cross the solid white line to overtake or pass other vehicles unless there are specific circumstances, such as turning left or avoiding an obstacle. Question 7. Which of the following is an example of aggressive driving behavior? A keeping a safe following distance from the vehicle ahead. B. Using turn signals to indicate lane changes or turns. C. Speeding and frequently changing lanes without signaling. D. Adhering to posted speed limits and traffic rules. The correct answer is C. Speeding and frequently changing lanes without signaling. Speeding and frequently changing lanes without signaling are examples of aggressive driving behavior. Aggressive driving includes actions that endanger or annoy other road users, such as tailgating, 
running red lights, or cutting off other drivers. Question 8. What is the meaning of a yield sign? A. Stop and wait for the light to turn green. B. Proceed with caution without stopping. C. Merge with traffic from the right. D. Give the right of way to other traffic. The correct answer is D. Give the right of way to other traffic. A yield sign indicates that drivers must give the right of way to other traffic, pedestrians or cyclists. They should slow down, be prepared to stop if necessary, and proceed only when it is safe and clear to do so. Question 9. Which of the following is an example of distracted driving? A. Adjusting the radio volume while driving on a straight road. B. Checking the rearview mirror before changing lanes. C. Reading a text message on a mobile phone while driving. D. Conversing with passengers in the vehicle. The correct answer is C. Reading a text message on a mobile phone while driving. Reading a text message on a mobile phone while driving is an example of distracted driving. Distracted driving involves any activity that diverts attention away from the primary task of operating the vehicle safely. This includes texting, using a mobile phone, eating, grooming, or any other activity that takes focus away from driving. Question 10. What should you do when encountering a work zone with orange warning signs? A. Increase your speed to pass through the zone quickly. B. Follow the directions given by the flagger or signs. C. Turn on your high beams for better visibility. D. Merge into the lane closest to the work zone. The correct answer is B. Follow the directions given by the flagger or signs. When encountering a work zone with orange warning signs, drivers should follow the directions given by the flagger or signs. Work zones often have specific traffic patterns, reduced speed limits or lane closures to ensure the safety of both workers and drivers. It is important to be attentive, patient, and follow any instructions provided to navigate the work zone safely. Question 11. What does a flashing yellow traffic signal indicate? A. Proceed with caution without stopping. B. Stop and wait for the light to turn green. C. Treat it as a yield sign. D. Slow down and prepare to stop. The correct answer is A. Proceed with caution without stopping. A flashing yellow traffic signal indicates that drivers should proceed with caution without stopping, yielding to pedestrians and oncoming traffic. Drivers should be alert and ready to react to any potential hazards. Question 12. What should you do if you miss your intended highway exit? A. Reverse on the shoulder and return to the missed exit. B. Continue driving until the next exit and turn around. C. Stop in the travel lanes and wait for assistance. D. Make a U-turn at the next intersection. The correct answer is B. Continue driving until the next exit and turn around. If you miss your intended highway exit, it is safest to continue driving until the next exit and then turn around. Making a U-turn on a highway or reversing on the shoulder can be dangerous and is often prohibited by law. Question 13. What is the purpose of an HOV, high occupancy vehicle lane? A. It allows vehicles to travel at higher speeds. B. It provides a designated lane for emergency vehicles. C. It promotes carpooling and reduces congestion. D. It is reserved for oversized commercial vehicles. The correct answer is C. It promotes carpooling and reduces congestion. The purpose of an HOV lane is to promote carpooling and reduce congestion by providing a designated lane for vehicles carrying multiple occupants. These lanes encourage the use of high occupancy vehicles, such as carpools, van pools, and buses, which can help alleviate traffic congestion and reduce emissions. Question 14. When should you use your vehicle's hazard lights? A. When driving in heavy rain or fog. B. When approaching a stop sign or traffic signal. C. When parked on the side of the road. D. When driving at night. The correct answer is C. When parked on the side of the road, hazard lights, also known as emergency flashers, should be used when your vehicle is parked on the side of the road. They alert other drivers to your presence and indicate that your vehicle is stationary and potentially obstructing traffic. It is important not to use hazard lights while driving as it can confuse other drivers. Question 15. What is the purpose of an anti-lock braking system, ABS, in a vehicle? A. To improve fuel efficiency. B. To prevent the engine from overheating. C. 
to maintain traction and steering control during braking. D. To enhance the vehicle's aerodynamics. The correct answer is C. To maintain traction and steering control during braking. The purpose of an anti-lock braking system, ABS, is to maintain traction and steering control during braking. ABS helps prevent the wheels from locking up or skidding, allowing the driver to maintain control of the vehicle while braking. This can be particularly useful in emergency braking situations or when driving on slippery surfaces. Question 16. When should you use your vehicle's headlights? A. Only during nighttime or low visibility conditions. B. Only when driving on highways or freeways. C. Only when driving in urban areas. D. Whenever visibility is reduced and it helps you see and be seen. The correct answer is D. Whenever visibility is reduced and it helps you see and be seen, vehicle headlights should be used whenever visibility is reduced, such as during nighttime, inclement weather, for example, rain, fog, snow, or in other situations where it helps you see the road and allows other drivers to see you. It is important to use headlights to improve safety and visibility on the road. Question 17. What should you do if you experience a tire blowout while driving? A. Brake immediately to bring the vehicle to a stop. B. Quickly steer to the side of the road and come to a complete stop. C. Accelerate to maintain control of the vehicle. D. Gradually release the accelerator and maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel. The correct answer is D. Gradually release the accelerator and maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel. If you experience a tire blowout while driving, it is important to remain calm and maintain control of the vehicle. Gradually release the accelerator to reduce speed. Keep a firm grip on the steering wheel to maintain control. And carefully steer to a safe location on the side of the road. Avoid braking suddenly or making abrupt steering movements, as they can cause loss of control. Question 18. What is the purpose of a blind spot when referring to driving? A. It allows vehicles to merge into traffic smoothly. B. It prevents other drivers from passing your vehicle. C. It is an area around your vehicle that is not visible in the mirrors. D. It provides a safe space for parking on the side of the road. The correct answer is C. It is an area around your vehicle that is not visible in the mirrors. A blind spot is an area around your vehicle that is not visible in the mirrors. It is important for drivers to be aware of their blind spots and check them by turning their heads to look over their shoulders before changing lanes or making maneuvers. Failure to check blind spots can result in collisions with vehicles that are not visible in the mirrors. Question 19. What is the recommended following distance behind the vehicle in front of you? A. One car length. B. Two seconds. C. Three seconds. D. Four car lengths. The correct answer is C. Three seconds. The recommended following distance behind the vehicle in front of you is at least three seconds. This allows you enough time to react to any sudden changes in traffic or road conditions. To measure the following distance, choose a fixed object, for example, a sign or a landmark, and start counting when the vehicle ahead passes it. You should reach that object at least three seconds later. Question 20. What is the purpose of a crosswalk? A. To mark the area where vehicles are allowed to park. B. To indicate a designated area for pedestrian crossings. C. To demarcate the boundary of a school zone. D. To indicate the location of traffic signals. The correct answer is B. To indicate a designated area for pedestrian crossings. A crosswalk is a designated area marked on the road to indicate where pedestrians should cross the street safely. It is important for drivers to yield the right of way to pedestrians within crosswalks and be aware of their presence to ensure their safety while crossing. Crosswalks are typically marked with white lines or other pavement markings. Question 21. What does a yellow diamond-shaped sign with black symbols or letters represent? A. Railroad crossing ahead. B. School zone ahead. C. No passing zone. D. Stop sign ahead. The correct answer is A. Railroad crossing ahead. A yellow diamond-shaped sign with black symbols or letters indicates a railroad crossing ahead. This sign is used to warn drivers that they are approaching a location where a railroad track crosses the road and they should be prepared to stop for trains. Question 22. What should you do if your vehicle begins to skid? A. Slam on the brakes to regain control. B. 
Steer in the opposite direction of the skid. C. Maintain firm pressure on the accelerator. D. Ease off the accelerator and steer in the direction you want to go. The correct answer is D. Ease off the accelerator and steer in the direction you want to go. If your vehicle begins to skid, it is important to stay calm and take appropriate actions. Ease off the accelerator or brake pedal, depending on the type of skid, and steer in the direction you want to go. Avoid making sudden or jerky movements with the steering wheel, as this can worsen the skid. Question 23. What is the purpose of a rumble strip on the side of a roadway? A. To alert drivers of a sharp curve ahead. B. To indicate a pedestrian crossing zone. C. To discourage speeding by creating noise and vibration. D. To mark the boundary of a bike lane. The correct answer is C. To discourage speeding by creating noise and vibration. Rumble strips are raised or grooved sections of the roadway surface that create noise and vibration when driven over. The purpose of rumble strips is to alert drivers who may be veering off the road or into another lane due to fatigue or inattentiveness. They also help to discourage speeding by providing a physical and auditory warning to slow down. Question 24. What is the meaning of a solid red arrow traffic signal? A. Proceed with caution if the intersection is clear. B. Stop and wait for the green arrow signal. C. Yield to oncoming traffic before proceeding. D. Make a right turn after coming to a complete stop. The correct answer is B. Stop and wait for the green arrow signal. A solid red arrow traffic signal means that drivers must come to a complete stop and wait for the green arrow signal before proceeding. It indicates that drivers are not allowed to make the movement indicated by the arrow until the signal changes. Question 25. What should you do if your vehicle's accelerator pedal becomes stuck? A. Pump the brakes rapidly to free the accelerator pedal. B. Shift to neutral, steer to a safe area, and stop the vehicle. C. Turn off the engine immediately to stop the vehicle. D. Apply the parking brake to slow down the vehicle gradually. The correct answer is B. Shift to neutral, steer to a safe area, and stop the vehicle. If your vehicle's accelerator pedal becomes stuck, the recommended action is to shift to neutral or disengage the clutch for manual transmissions, steer to a safe area away from traffic, and bring the vehicle to a stop. This allows you to regain control of the vehicle and safely address the issue without the engine's power increasing. It is important to avoid abrupt braking, as it may cause loss of control. Question 26. When approaching a steady red traffic light, what should you do? A. Stop. Then proceed when it is safe to do so. B. Slow down and proceed with caution. C. Come to a complete stop and remain stopped. D. Stop only if there is oncoming traffic. The correct answer is C. Come to a complete stop and remain stopped. When approaching a steady red traffic light, drivers must come to a complete stop behind the stop line or crosswalk. They must remain stopped until the light turns green or a signal allows them to proceed. Question 27. What is the purpose of a speed limit? A. To ensure drivers reach their destination quickly. B. To promote safe and reasonable driving speeds. C. To create revenue for the transportation department. D. To encourage drivers to exceed the posted limit. The correct answer is B. To promote safe and reasonable driving speeds. The purpose of a speed limit is to promote safe and reasonable driving speeds for specific road conditions. Speed limits are set based on factors such as roadway design, traffic patterns, and safety considerations. Adhering to speed limits helps reduce the risk of accidents and promotes overall safety on the road. Question 28. What should you do when you see a flashing red traffic signal? A. Proceed with caution without stopping. B. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. C. Yield the right of way to oncoming traffic. D. Increase your speed and pass through the intersection quickly. The correct answer is B. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. When encountering a flashing red traffic signal, drivers should treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. They must yield the right of way to cross traffic or pedestrians before proceeding when it is safe to do so. Question 29. What is the purpose of an airbag in a vehicle? A. To improve fuel efficiency. B. To provide extra storage space. C. To enhance audio system performance. D. To provide protection in the event of a collision. The correct answer is D. 
to provide protection in the event of a collision. The purpose of an airbag in a vehicle is to provide protection to the occupants in the event of a collision. Airbags are designed to deploy rapidly upon impact, creating a cushioning effect and reducing the risk of injury to the driver and passengers. Question 30. When should you use your vehicle's turn signals? A. Only when changing lanes. B. Only when turning at intersections. C. Only when driving on the highway. D. Anytime you plan to change direction or merge with traffic. The correct answer is D. Anytime you plan to change direction or merge with traffic, vehicle turn signals should be used anytime you plan to change direction or merge with traffic. This includes signaling your intentions to turn at intersections, change lanes, or merge onto highways. Signaling helps other drivers anticipate your movements and promote safe and efficient traffic flow. Question 31. What should you do if you encounter a school bus with its red lights flashing and stop arm extended? A. Slow down and proceed with caution. B. Come to a complete stop until the bus resumes motion. C. Honk your horn to alert the bus driver. D. Pass the bus quickly before it stops completely. The correct answer is B. Come to a complete stop until the bus resumes motion. When a school bus has its red lights flashing and stop arm extended, it indicates that children are either boarding or disembarking from the bus. In this situation, all vehicles, regardless of the direction of travel, must come to a complete stop until the bus resumes motion and the red lights stop flashing. This is to ensure the safety of the children crossing the road. Question 32. What does a solid white line on the roadway indicate? A. The edge of the roadway. B. A shared turning lane. C. A passing zone. D. A no passing zone. The correct answer is D. A no passing zone. A solid white line on the roadway indicates a no passing zone. Drivers are not allowed to cross this line to overtake or pass another vehicle. It is important to obey this marking to ensure safe and legal driving practices. Question 33. What is the purpose of a roundabout? A. To slow down traffic. B. To provide parking spaces. C. To reduce congestion and improve traffic flow. D. To signal upcoming hazards. The correct answer is C. To reduce congestion and improve traffic flow. The purpose of a roundabout is to reduce congestion and improve traffic flow at intersections. Roundabouts are designed to enhance safety and efficiency by eliminating the need for traffic signals or stop signs. Vehicles circulate counterclockwise through the roundabout, yielding to traffic already in the circle. This helps to reduce delays and improve overall traffic movement. Question 34. What should you do if your vehicle starts to hydroplane on a wet road? A. Slam on the brakes to regain control. B. Turn the steering wheel sharply to the side. C. Ease off the accelerator and gently steer in the direction you want to go. D. Accelerate to brake free from the hydroplaning. The correct answer is C. Ease off the accelerator and gently steer in the direction you want to go. If your vehicle starts to hydroplane on a wet road, losing traction due to a layer of water between the tires and the road surface, it is important to stay calm and take appropriate actions. Ease off the accelerator without sudden braking and gently steer in the direction you want to go. Avoid making sudden or jerky movements with the steering wheel or braking as they can worsen the situation. As the vehicle regains traction, you can slowly accelerate. Question 35. What should you do if you encounter an aggressive driver on the road? A. Match their speed and assert your presence. B. Engage in verbal confrontation. C. Avoid eye contact and maintain a safe distance. D. Block their vehicle from changing lanes. The correct answer is C. Avoid eye contact and maintain a safe distance. When encountering an aggressive driver on the road, it is important to prioritize your safety and the safety of others. Avoid engaging with the aggressive driver as it may escalate the situation. Maintain a safe distance from their vehicle and avoid making eye contact. If necessary, report the aggressive driving behavior to local authorities when it is safe to do so. Question 36. What is the purpose of a shoulder on the side of a roadway? A. To provide additional lanes for passing. B. To allow vehicles to make U-turns. C. To provide a space for emergency stopping or parking. D. To mark the boundary of a bicycle lane. The correct answer is C. To provide a space for emergency stopping or parking. The purpose of a shoulder on the side of a roadway 
is to provide a designated space for emergency stopping or parking. In case of vehicle breakdowns or emergencies, drivers can safely pull over to the shoulder without impeding the flow of traffic. Question 37. What should you do if you miss your intended exit on a highway? A. Immediately reverse and backtrack to the missed exit. B. Continue driving until you find a suitable turnaround point. C. Make a sudden lane change to reach the missed exit. D. Proceed to the next available exit and reroute from there. The correct answer is D. Proceed to the next available exit and reroute from there. If you miss your intended exit on a highway, it is important to stay calm and avoid making sudden or unsafe maneuvers. Proceed to the next available exit and then find a safe location to reroute and return to your intended destination. Making sudden lane changes or reversing on the highway can be dangerous and is not recommended. Question 38. What does a solid yellow line on the roadway indicate? A. A passing zone. B. The edge of the roadway. C. A shared turning lane. D. A no passing zone. The correct answer is D. A no passing zone. A solid yellow line on the roadway indicates a no passing zone. Drivers are not allowed to cross this line to overtake or pass another vehicle. It signifies that it is unsafe to pass due to limited visibility or other hazardous conditions. Question 39. What should you do when encountering a funeral procession on the road? A. Follow the procession closely to maintain traffic flow. B. Honk your horn to show respect. C. Yield the right of way and allow the procession to proceed. D. Pass the procession quickly to avoid delays. The correct answer is C. Yield the right of way and allow the procession to proceed. When encountering a funeral procession on the road, it is important to show respect and courtesy. Yield the right of way to the procession and allow it to proceed without interruption. It is recommended to maintain a safe distance and refrain from honking or making sudden movements that may disrupt the procession. Question 40. What is the purpose of a traffic signal with a flashing yellow arrow? A. To indicate a protected left turn. B. To signal a pedestrian crossing zone. C. To indicate a yield sign. D. To warn of an upcoming stop sign. The correct answer is A. To indicate a protected left turn. A traffic signal with a flashing yellow arrow indicates a protected left turn. Drivers are allowed to make a left turn, but they must yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. The flashing yellow arrow indicates that drivers can proceed with caution when it is safe to do so after yielding to other traffic. Question 41. When should you use your high beam headlights? A. When driving in foggy conditions. B. When approaching or following another vehicle. C. When driving on well-lit city streets. D. When driving in rural areas with no oncoming traffic. The correct answer is D. When driving in rural areas with no oncoming traffic, high beam headlights provide maximum illumination and should be used when driving in rural areas with no oncoming traffic. They allow better visibility of the road ahead, especially in areas with limited lighting. However, it is important to dim the high beams when approaching or following another vehicle to avoid blinding the other driver. Question 42. What does a white sign with black arrows pointing in different directions indicate? A. An upcoming intersection. B. A highway exit. C. A one-way street. D. A pedestrian crosswalk. The correct answer is C. A one-way street. A white sign with black arrows pointing in different directions indicates a one-way street. This sign informs drivers that the road they are entering or currently on is designed for one-way traffic and they should only travel in the direction indicated by the arrows. Question 43. What should you do when approaching a yield sign? A. Come to a complete stop. B. Maintain your speed and proceed without stopping. C. Slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. D. Speed up to merge smoothly with traffic. The correct answer is C. Slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. When approaching a yield sign, Drivers must slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. A yield sign indicates that drivers approaching a junction or merge point must give the right of way to vehicles already on the roadway or in the intersection. Drivers should proceed with caution and yield to other traffic. Question 44. What is the purpose of an anti-lock braking system, ABS? A. To reduce fuel consumption. B. To prevent tire blowouts. 
C, to improve vehicle acceleration. D, to allow for controlled braking during emergency stops. The correct answer is D, to allow for controlled braking during emergency stops. The purpose of an anti-lock braking system, ABS, is to allow for controlled braking during emergency stops. ABS prevents the wheels from locking up or skidding, helping the driver maintain steering control while braking. This system helps to shorten braking distances and improve overall vehicle stability in emergency situations. Question 45. What is the purpose of a car seat belt? A. To keep the interior of the car clean. B. To prevent passengers from moving around inside the vehicle. C. To increase fuel efficiency. D. To improve the vehicle's handling. The correct answer is B. To prevent passengers from moving around inside the vehicle. The purpose of a car seat belt is to prevent passengers from moving around inside the vehicle during sudden stops or collisions. Seat belts are essential for occupant safety and can significantly reduce the risk of injury or ejection from the vehicle in the event of a crash. They help to restrain occupants and keep them in their seats, increasing the chances of survival and minimizing injuries. Question 46. What should you do when approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights? A. Proceed with caution if no trains are visible. B. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. C. Increase your speed to quickly clear the tracks. D. Slow down and proceed without stopping. The correct answer is B. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. When approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights, drivers must treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. They should remain stopped until the lights stop flashing, the gates are fully raised, and it is safe to proceed. This is to ensure the safety of both the driver and any oncoming trains. Question 47. What should you do if you witness a vehicle collision? A. Drive around the collision and continue on your way. B. Stay at the scene and offer assistance if possible. C. Honk your horn to alert other drivers. D. Take photos and post them on social media. The correct answer is B. Stay at the scene and offer assistance if possible. If you witness a vehicle collision, it is important to stay at the scene and offer assistance if possible. Call emergency services if needed and provide any relevant information to the authorities. Leaving the scene without reporting the incident can result in legal consequences. It is crucial to prioritize the safety and well-being of those involved. Question 48. What does a solid yellow arrow signal indicate? A. Prepare to come to a complete stop. B. Proceed with caution and prepare to yield. C. Make a left turn without yielding to oncoming traffic. D. Stop and wait for the signal to turn green. The correct answer is B. Proceed with caution and prepare to yield. A solid yellow arrow signal indicates that drivers should proceed with caution and prepare to yield. It typically appears when the opposing traffic has a green light and drivers making a left turn must yield to oncoming traffic. The solid yellow arrow serves as a warning to drivers to exercise caution before making their turn. Question 49. What is the purpose of a rumble strip on the edge of a roadway? A. To provide a space for emergency stopping or parking. B. To warn drivers of an upcoming toll booth. C. To indicate the presence of a pedestrian crosswalk. D. To alert drivers who veer off the roadway. The correct answer is D. To alert drivers who veer off the roadway. The purpose of a rumble strip on the edge of a roadway is to alert drivers who veer off the roadway. Rumble strips are designed to produce noise and vibration when a vehicle's tires travel over them, warning the driver that they are leaving the travel lane. This helps prevent accidents and encourages drivers to stay within their designated lane. Question 50. What should you do if you encounter a work zone on the road? A. Maintain your speed and drive as usual. B. Increase your speed to quickly pass through the zone. C. Slow down and follow any posted signs or instructions. D. Ignore any flaggers or construction workers. The correct answer is C. Slow down and follow any posted signs or instructions. When encountering a work zone on the road, it is important to slow down and follow any posted signs or instructions. Work zones often have reduced speed limits and may contain hazards such as construction equipment, uneven pavement, or workers on the road. Slowing down helps ensure the safety of both the driver and the workers present in the work zone. Question 51. 
What is the purpose of a white triangle-shaped sign with a red border? A. To indicate a stop sign ahead. B. To mark a pedestrian crossing zone. C. To warn of a yield sign ahead. D. To indicate a school zone. The correct answer is C. To warn of a yield sign ahead. A white triangle-shaped sign with a red border is used to warn drivers of an upcoming yield sign. This sign alerts drivers to be prepared to yield the right-of-way to other vehicles or pedestrians at the intersection ahead. Question 52. What should you do when approaching a curve in the road? A. Maintain your speed and stay in your lane. B. Slow down before entering the curve. C. Increase your speed to navigate the curve smoothly. D. Turn the steering wheel sharply to the side. The correct answer is B. Slow down before entering the curve. When approaching a curve in the road, it is important to slow down before entering the curve. This allows you to maintain better control of your vehicle and reduces the risk of skidding or losing control. It is also advisable to stay in your lane and avoid sudden or sharp steering movements. Question 53. What does a diamond-shaped sign with a picture of a deer indicate? A. An upcoming animal crossing zone. B. A speed limit reduction ahead. C. A wildlife preserve area. D. A one-way street. The correct answer is A. An upcoming animal crossing zone. A diamond-shaped sign with a picture of a deer is used to indicate an upcoming animal crossing zone. This sign alerts drivers to the potential presence of wildlife, particularly deer, in the area. Drivers should exercise caution and be prepared to slow down or stop if necessary to avoid colliding with animals crossing the road. Question 54. What should you do if your vehicle's tire blows out while driving? A. Slam on the brakes to come to a quick stop. B. Gradually release the accelerator and steer straight. C. Make sudden steering movements to regain control. D. Accelerate to maintain stability. The correct answer is B. Gradually release the accelerator and steer straight. If your vehicle's tire blows out while driving, it is important to remain calm and respond appropriately. Gradually release the accelerator to slow down and maintain control of the vehicle. Steer straight ahead and avoid making sudden steering movements. Once you have regained control, safely pull off the road and change the tire or seek assistance. Question 55. What is the purpose of a car's rearview mirror? A. To check blind spots before changing lanes. B. To adjust the volume of the car's audio system. C. To apply makeup or groom while driving. D. To monitor traffic behind the vehicle. The correct answer is D. To monitor traffic behind the vehicle. The purpose of a car's rearview mirror is to monitor traffic behind the vehicle. It provides the driver with a view of vehicles approaching from the rear, allowing them to make informed decisions when changing lanes, merging, or slowing down. Rearview mirrors help ensure safer driving by increasing awareness of the surrounding traffic. Question 56. What should you do if your vehicle starts to skid? A. Slam on the brakes to regain control. B. Steer in the opposite direction of the skid. C. Accelerate to straighten the vehicle. D. Ease off the gas and steer in the direction of the skid. The correct answer is D. Ease off the gas and steer in the direction of the skid. If your vehicle starts to skid, it is important to remain calm and take appropriate action. Ease off the gas pedal to reduce speed and regain traction. Steer in the direction of the skid, meaning if the rear of the vehicle is sliding to the right, gently steer to the right. This helps the tires regain grip and helps regain control of the vehicle. Question 57. What is the purpose of a traffic circle or roundabout? A. To regulate the speed limit on the road. B. To provide a designated area for parking. C. To slow down traffic and improve safety. D. To indicate the presence of a pedestrian crosswalk. The correct answer is C. To slow down traffic and improve safety. The purpose of a traffic circle or roundabout is to slow down traffic and improve safety at intersections. Vehicles entering a roundabout must yield to traffic already in the circle and proceed in a counterclockwise direction. The circular design helps reduce the severity of accidents and provides a continuous flow of traffic. Question 58. What does a solid yellow line alongside a broken yellow line on a roadway indicate? A. A passing zone on both sides. B. A no passing zone on both sides. C. A passing zone on the side with the solid line. D. A passing zone on the side with the broken line. The correct answer is 
C. A passing zone on the side with the solid line. When a solid yellow line is alongside a broken yellow line on a roadway, it indicates a passing zone on the side with the broken line and a no passing zone on the side with the solid line. Drivers are allowed to pass other vehicles on the side with the broken line when it is safe to do so, but passing is not permitted on the side with the solid line. Question 59. What is the purpose of an HOV lane? A. To allow oversized vehicles to travel together. B. To provide a dedicated lane for emergency vehicles. C. To reduce congestion by encouraging carpooling. D. To mark the boundary of a bicycle lane. The correct answer is C. To reduce congestion by encouraging carpooling. The purpose of an HOV, high occupancy vehicle lane, is to reduce congestion and encourage carpooling. These lanes are reserved for vehicles with multiple occupants, typically a specified minimum number of passengers, such as two or more. By incentivizing carpooling and reducing the number of single occupancy vehicles, HOV lanes help alleviate traffic congestion and promote more efficient use of road capacity. Question 60. What should you do if your vehicle's accelerator becomes stuck while driving? A. Slam on the brakes and bring the vehicle to a sudden stop. B. Shift into neutral and safely pull over to the side of the road. C. Turn off the ignition and coast to a stop. D. Pump the accelerator pedal to loosen it. The correct answer is B. Shift into neutral and safely pull over to the side of the road. If your vehicle's accelerator becomes stuck while driving, the best course of action is to shift into neutral and safely pull over to the side of the road. Shifting into neutral will disengage the engine from the wheels, allowing you to regain control of the vehicle's speed. Once you have safely pulled over, you can then turn off the ignition and seek assistance or have the vehicle inspected by a professional. Slamming on the brakes may cause the vehicle to lose control or skid while pumping the accelerator pedal or turning off the ignition while the vehicle is still in gear can be dangerous. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your DMV exam on your first try.